Hello, my name is Ryan Didemore, and it's a pleasure for me to introduce to you the abstract entitled Focus Ultrasound Mediated Blood-Brain Barrier Penetrance to Enable Cell-Free DNA as a Liquid Biopsy in Recurrent Primary Brain Tumors. As a background, we've had numerous clinical challenges in treating brain tumors, uh, with the blood-brain barrier stopping some of our most effective cancer tools. And we just have to look at the outcomes to give this as a proof point. If you look on the image on the right, and you compare the median survival of a new GBM patient, the glioblastoma patient, back from the 2000s to today, in 20 years, we've gained very little in terms of overall survival for our patients. A big challenge with this is the inability to more characterize the patient, both with tissue biopsy, which are rarely used in the community, and liquid biopsies, in which there's not enough DNA that is released into circulation for these tests to be utilized. And obviously, systemic therapies, the lack of ability to get drugs through the blood-brain barrier that can target the disease effectively. If we contrast this to solid tumors and oncology that do not have the blood-brain barrier as a challenge, we have seen over the last 20 years a dramatic improvement in survival. If you look at new metastatic lung cancer or new metastatic breast cancer patients, we're seeing tremendous jumps in survival 20 years ago versus today. And a big part of this is the enablement of precision medicine. The idea that we can use uh, high content genomic information from tissue biopsies and liquid biopsies to inform which drugs we develop and, and ultimately give to patients. And now we're starting to hit the second wave of precision medicine where we're creating MRD tests or minimal residual disease tests or molecular residual disease tests to assess an early recurrence of the patient and how to triage those patients. So the objectives for this study was to develop a focus ultrasound device to enable precision medicine in brain tumor patients. To have that device guide the ultrasound non-invasively to enable brain-wide safe opening of the blood-brain barrier, to correct for specific patient properties, both physical and acoustic, and ensure the device fits within the current workflow of treating cancer patients and is compact and portable. And finally, to enable the improvements in liquid biopsy detection and analysis to facilitate precision medicine in brain tumor patients. This is the process for the Cordance platform, and I'll go into the device in more detail, but just to note that the process starts with the patient receiving a diagnostic MR. In that diagnostic MR, the physician will contour the region of interest. When the patient comes to the community clinic, as you can see in this case, it's an infusion treatment center, there is a Cordance cap that is put on their head, and then that is tethered to a portable ultrasound unit. The cap has transcranial Doppler built into the sides of, uh, of the head using high frequency two megahertz imaging uh, through the temporal lobe. And this will identify the circle of Willis uh, and the blood flow through the circle of Willis, which is also on the diagnostic MR. This becomes a fiducial marker, which will help the cap identify the region of interest. Once that region of interest is identified, the microbubbles are injected into the patient's arm and the blood brain is open using the low frequency 220 kilohertz uh, ultrasound, which is beam formed onto that region of interest. The cap is coupled to the head using a, uh, a water jacket to allow the patient to keep their hair. And as you can see the design of the cap, we have the high frequency imaging transducers on the side of the head and then interspersed throughout the rest of the cap are the low frequency 220 kilohertz transducers as well as wideband monitoring transducers. The process, the mechanism of action is the bubbles are circulated through the brain and in the blood vessels. And then as the ultrasound hits those bubbles, the bubbles will vibrate, uh, expanding to as large as seven micrometers in diameter, which is larger than the, the blood the capillaries in the brain. This expands and pulls apart the tight junctions that hold up the blood brain barrier. And as these are opened up, the blood brain barrier stays open optimally for about five hours and fully closed at about 24 hours giving us a window for us to uh, receive a blood sample or to infuse drug. In the case of the blood-brain barrier opening, this whole process takes about 30 minutes for the patient to undergo. The group at Sunnybrook at University of Toronto demonstrated with a different focus ultrasound device the ability to open up the blood-brain barrier to enable an egress of cell-free DNA into circulation. And on the image on the right, you can see data from patients with glioblastoma prior to Temidar administration where they were, received a blood sample prior to opening the blood-brain barrier, and then immediately after opening the blood-brain barrier, recognizing about a two and a half fold increase in cell-free DNA concentration through opening of the blood-brain barrier. 
With the Cordance device, we've demonstrated the ability to open up the blood brain barrier in a large animal. You can see images, the second and third images, which show the gadolinium diffusion, as well as the Evan Blue diffusion through the blood brain barrier. We've also developed our own uh, guidance software system. And in particular, the one of the main challenges of opening up the blood brain barrier is the ability to focus effectively given different sizes and shapes of heads, as well as locations of the brain tumor. And the top row demonstrates based upon different locations, if you use conventional focusing through the head, the, the difficulty of the standing waves in causing problems with the spot size, as well as clutter level. The bottom row demonstrates using the Cordance guidance system, our proprietary system, the ability to uh, keep that spot size uh, to the region of interest as well as the clutter level down. We have demonstrated in silico that based upon different sizes of heads and shapes, we have the ability to maintain this uh, through different locations that a brain tumor might exist. And you can see the examples in B, C, and D, where we are able to identify those different regions and open up the blood brain barrier in those locations. For the clinical trial schema, we will be recruiting patients with both primary brain tumors, as well as solid tumors that have a new brain metastasis, so commonly from lung cancer and breast cancer. The enrollment criteria will require that those patients have an initial diagnostic specimen that could be analyzed for tissue genomics. We will recruit the patients when they either have recurrent glioblastoma or a new brain metastasis. Recruit patients, recruited patients will receive a blood specimen uh, as a pre-opening specimen. The patient will then get their blood brain barrier opening with the Cordance device, and then we'll perform a post-blood draw, post-BBB blood draw, as well as an MRI confirmation of the safe and efficacious opening of the blood brain barrier. Our endpoints are uh, to demonstrate the safety as well as efficacy of our blood brain barrier device. To analyze the results, uh, we will collect three tubes of blood at both time points. And as you can see on the bottom, that the analysis performed, uh, one blood sample will be, one pair of blood samples will be looking at an oncology NGS platform panel. This is the common panels that you see in lung cancer, breast, and colorectal and prostate cancer, which represent usually hundreds of genes that are known oncogenic drivers. The second will be a, a new MRD test, which is a tumor-informed DD-PCR technology. We will use the diagnostic specimen of the patient to create a personalized panel to confirm the truncal alterations, that being that we will be able to demonstrate that the blood draws we are seeing, the DNA we're seeing, are tumorigenic and are related to the primary diagnostic specimen. And the third blood sample will be looking at the whole transcriptome to demonstrate differences in the genomic profile of the patient uh, after uh, at the recurrent contemporary time point versus the diagnostic specimen. In conclusion, we have developed a portable, scalable, non-invasive focus ultrasound device to enable brain-wide safe opening of the blood-brain barrier. We're utilizing low-frequency ultrasound and cordance guidance technology to target all regions of the brain and correct for variances in physical and acoustic properties. And we've designed a clinical trial schema to evaluate the safety and efficacy of the cordance device for improving liquid biopsy results in primary brain and brain metastatic cancer patients. Thank you for your time and attention. We look forward to connecting to you.